Ouch. Not 100% sure, but I don't believe that's a good thing to see in a transmission fan. About to spin it over. Let's see how she does. That is an affirmative. So, during the process, after getting all the electrical gremlins and things taken care of, and parts issues and all kinds of stuff that was going on, I'm test driving it one day, and this thing, it just kind of does this little shutter, drops out of overdrive, and it was just kind of weird. So, I grab third, and I'm cruising along, everything feels fine, I pop it back up into overdrive into fourth, and it binds up like it's in two gears at once where it just it grabs and binds popped it back down into third and thought Ugh, what in the world is going on here I got a scare going on here driving the money trying to get it tuned and you can hear it won't shift into overdrive and when it does try to shift in it's got a severe severe vibration it almost acts like it wants to lock up. I don't know what this thing's doing, but we gotta get it back home, get it to the shop, see what's going on. Doggone it. If it ain't one thing, it's a million. I was about 20 miles away, limp it back to the shop, get it in here, and I mean, immediately drop the pan. And this thing is just packed full of metal. It looks like somebody has taken just metal shavings and chunks of metal and dumped them in the pan. Fluid's still crystal clear, but it is just packed full of metal. I tear the trans apart, and it's so gummed up with metal and everything. And you can see what was in the pan. So I start pulling the, the components out of it, and I'm looking at stuff, and it's like, like this component right here, I mean, you've got a Sonax Smart Shell, which is like top of the line, and this bearing even, this, whoops, this bearing, it's just shot. You know, it's got crud all in it. There's no way you'll get that cleaned up. So, literally, I couldn't get a bearing in time, so I got another sun shell, and, and I start looking at those type of components, and I go, what is the point? There's no point in cleaning this all up. I still have the, the, the possibility of having metal in this thing. Throw it out, let's start over. So I get another core, tear it all down. It's in good shape, build it back together. Upgraded a couple components, went with a uh, Sonax uh, Super Hold Servo, which is a just top-notch piece as far as holding for second, second and fourth gear. Went with high energy frictions all the way throughout. I reused low and reverse and that's it. Other than that, it was all in great shape. And then I stepped up on the torque converter a little bit and I went with, uh, with the converter that I used from B&I Torque Converter in Oklahoma and went with a Corvette converter basically is what it is. So it's a 2000 stall, just a tad bit higher stall, a little bit better of a unit. They built it nice for me. So went ahead, did some upgrades on it, replaced the transmission cooler lines and everything. And then as I'm playing with everything, I figure out what happened, why it failed, which is the key right there. When you're, when you're going through things, you've got to do your CSI. The cooler in the radiator plugged up. So literally I was getting no cooler flow. I didn't get any overheat or anything and I even went back through some data, had no overheating issues or anything like that, but it wasn't getting the volume of oil back to it, which basically lubricates all the planetary gears and everything. So we get the trans all back together, get it back in, and then the gift that keeps giving here. All of a sudden I start looking as I'm underneath it running it and we got a little drip of oil. 
So I look at it, I'm starting to chase things around, making sure it's not coming from up top, valve covers, everything's good. What's it gotta be? Rear main. The rear main seal. So I just had the transmission out. Oh, let's pull it out one more time, why not, you know? So pull the transmission out, pull the flywheel off, put a rear main in it, and I tell you, the parts issues just keep coming. We had that, we had the fuel level sender. That gave me issues. Before we could get it to LS Fest, we had electrical issues with the lighting and everything, and that ended up being ground issues and connections uh, underneath the dash, you know, just old stuff. But it was just the gift it kept giving. Here's a sending unit I bought, and it looked like the other one, but the other one had fallen to pieces, and the sender was actually laying in the tank. So there wasn't a whole lot to compare it to. So i put this thing in here, okay? Boom, there it is, all right? It's not like you can put it in wrong. It's got tabs and indexes that you can't go the wrong way. Now we're gonna take a look down in the fuel tank, and there's the float, and look what's right above it. The filler pipe. So at half a tank, it hits the filler pipe and it won't read any higher than half a tank. If I decide to order another one, and I place the order, and same part number, everything. Do you see something wrong there? This is getting ridiculous. This is the kind of garbage I deal with almost every day. Part suppliers, quit using China. Quit using this garbage. This is what I deal with every single day. Hours and hours and hours. I'm gonna start billing time. Y'all can pay me. Now let's put this other one in here and see what it looks like. Okay, same thing. Look at that, indexed, good to go. Look at there, it's on the other side. It don't hit the filler pipe, it reads full. Here's what's in the parts catalog, look at that. Exactly opposite, that's ridiculous. We get all that garbage taken care of and then Gabe comes over and I said, hey, let's do some drone footage and, you know, let's go for a drive and we can film a little bit. What is this I see? I think we got just about the tuning all done. I believe so. Hoping. 72 Monte Carlo we should be going to the owner this week. We going for a drive? Yep. of a lot of a lot of work on this thing and here we are right. certainly not the first drive but yeah this this project has been wrought with lots of issues and problems that have cropped up electrical problems and all kinds of things so <laughs> you know, all clear Super Hold Servo, and they've got this 
it, it just under normal driving shifts kind of normal but when you're on it man that sucker it hits and it hits hard so real happy with the transmission so far so we'll see how it goes here's the crazy part it's geared so high look at the rpm we're doing almost 70 miles an hour and look at look at that i mean running like 1200 rpm at 70. Yeah, if this thing was set up, if you did a few other things, suspension-wise and everything, this is a 200 mile an hour car. That's right. And how many miles does she have on her now, currently? Uh, what's that say? 300 and something there? 333 miles. There you go. Oh, she shop. It's a guy who works more than me. Santa. got AC. It all works with the factory controls. We've got heat. I ran the AC through the computer like the uh, factory LS does. That way it'll bring the idle up and down and, and control everything by the computer. So far it seems to be working real well. Okay, so tell the people, if you were going to build this car for you, what would you do different? I think I would have gone non-stock suspension um, and lowered it about three inches. And then, believe it or not, I'd have put a turbo on it. Yeah, shocker. <laughs> now, he's had faster vehicles. He, he had a uh, GM high-tech performance cover car for a while, a uh, supercharged 2002 Pontiac Trans Am. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, no danger of hitting nothing. No, and it's stock brakes all the way around. The only thing I did is I put power stop, cross drilled and slotted rotors up front. That just kind of helps with the brake fade if you do have to get on it kind of hard. They're nothing special. The rotors that were on it were shot, so yep. just a little upgrade. But the rear brakes are all stock drums. Didn't even replace anything. So our nice little quaint area of the country here has started to grow. They're building these huge housing uh, developments around us. And unfortunately, we're dealing with traffic. In the country, dealing with traffic. Man. It seemed like no matter how far out you go, hey, remember when Windows All did that? No buttons? No, actually, I, I don't. <laughs> out to our uh, our normal test drive road which is down a uh, an industrial park and not a lot of traffic and all of a sudden I start smelling fuel that's kind of weird you know new fuel system everything's good and one of the fittings is leaking probably China struck again but we kind of patch it up real quick and then just lift it home what's that it smell fuel we got a solid drip coming from here I'm almost afraid to drive it home. Joints. That's a pretty serious drip. Yep. Maybe that'll get us home. time. 
times. Okay, let's go. Now here, once Mike gets this, his big thing is he wants to tinker with it. So there's a lot of stuff like the rear view mirror is all floppy here and this rear view mirror is loose and you know just little things like that. I'm not going to mess with it. It's, it's stuff he wants to do. He's a pretty handy guy. He could do a lot of work. He actually had an old Ford Torino that he rebuilt from the ground up. Engine rebuild. Did all the body work, painted it, did all that stuff. So I mean it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. But he's pretty excited to get this one. He can mess around with it, do a few things. He's going to put new weather stripping on the doors. That'll quiet it down quite a bit. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting up and showing the, the previous owner's wife the car. Uh, Rick, who owned it, passed away last year of cancer. And uh, real sad story there. But we'll talk with Lisa a little bit. Hopefully she won't be too shy on camera and talk about him. He's a good guy, so it should be easy to talk about. Yeah, one of his sons, the, the son who drove this car on a daily basis for quite a few years, he might be there. have been leaking just from the fitting because this oat ring's still good. Hmm. Just tie, just tie her up. See what happens. Well, that actually doesn't feel real good. That o ring's going to collapse. Well, it's my organized set there. You see that? Back in the day, when you had a square key and a round key, square key was for the ignition, a round key was for the the doors. Nope, it's still leaking. Man, it's got to be the fitting. parts that you buy and everything starts falling apart. Dadgummit. China. Everything's from China. 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 Cross thread it, measure twice, cut 45 times. Nice, that's good. Okay, let's see.
verdict? I think we're good. All right. So we want to share a little bit about the previous owner, Rick Davis. Uh, Rick, through the years, became a really good friend of mine. We're fellow Christian brothers. We met when our kids were in, the, in a Boy Scout troop together. We would go on camp out, spend all weekend together, met up once a week at meetings and got to know each other talking and things. Probably, uh, I would guess a couple of years ago, I went to see Rick working on one of his cars for him and he didn't look himself. He just looked a little bit, you know, you can see it in someone's face when they're not feeling real good. And I asked him if he was okay. And he said, well, I want you to pray for me. I passed out at church last week. They took me to the hospital. Uh, they do a scan of me and everything, they find out he has stomach cancer. He went through rounds of all the different treatments and stuff, and I talked to him here and there, but I don't understand that as much as I should. He got a clean bill of health. His numbers were good. He was looking good. He was feeling good. His energy was up. Everything seemed, from what he told me and what I saw, he was doing great. And things kept going along, and other than weight loss, he looked great. And then one day, I get a text early in the morning. And it's from Rick on his phone, but the text says, Brian, this is Lisa. I just wanted to let you know Rick passed away this morning. And I tell you, my heart was heavy. It was just tough to you know, realize he left behind two boys. They're both adults, but you know, he left the two boys and his wife behind, as well as his niece that, that lives with them. And that was a tough thing to take. We lost a godly man that day. Uh, godly father, but his legacy lives on with his family, his boys, as well as with the car. Beautiful winter day here in Texas. I've got the trailer ready to go, and that's because we're going to try to make somebody's Christmas and deliver this bad boy. Let's hope everything goes well. So far, so good. Everything's been fine. And I'm excited to see what Mike's reaction is. Stick around. Loaded up, ready to go. Gonna grab a quick bite to eat and hit the road. Here we go, taking it back to Mike. I don't know why, but I'm nervous. I hardly ever get nervous when I finish up a vehicle. This one's been so long, so many problems. I just hope all goes well. I think it will, we'll see, won't we? At the local quick trip. Decide, I'm gonna go see Rick's wife. I just contacted her and asked her, would you like to see the car? She said, yeah, I'd love to. She, said, she hadn't seen it since 2016. She hadn't ridden in it since before their son Matt got it. So she doesn't recall ever riding in it from what she told me. and Lisa's house. Bring back a few memories. <laughs> I tell you, it couldn't be in better hands. The guy that's going to own it, he lives right down here, just down the road from you. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know where the is? is? Uh, right off of Davis. So, I mean, it's like three miles from here. You might... Well, thank you. I think you'll like the way it sounds, too. I think Rick would love it. I tell you, he would absolutely love it. He would be really green from ear to ear if he saw this. Oh, he probably is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I he's glad that it went good hands. Oh, it's, this guy literally, he, he was going to fix it up and sell it. That was his original intent. 
And then he decided, he called me up and he goes, Brian, I changed my mind. I'm keeping it. Let's go full bore. So we started going full bore on it. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll see it around, I'm sure. He's going to put some miles on it. But you'll like this part too. That smile made all it worth it. It sure did. It sounds good. Well, yeah. You want to go for a spin around the block? Oh, I don't know. Come on, let's go. You'll love it. You will love it. So, Lisa, when's the last time you rode in it? I don't even know. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Because Matt had it for quite a few years. Yeah, and I did, I did not ride in it when he had it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, I tell you, I pray for you quite a bit. Just for God's comfort, I know it hadn't been easy. This puts a little bit of a smile on your face. Oh, <laughs> I know it. I thought of it and I said, before I deliver it, I got it. All right, you ready? <laughs> uh -oh. Something's dragging. All of a sudden, I hear something scraping. I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And I thought maybe something we picked up off the road. I don't know. Maybe a piece of trim came off of it. It sounded like, you know, just a little piece of metal or something scraping. Something dragging on the ground. I guess we caught something. That's all right. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. I get out and the transmission cooler's laying on the ground. Like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm so stressed out because of all the problems. I just stuff it back up in there, turn around, idle it back to... Lisa's house and then go get everything that I need to fix it. And crazy enough, this thing had two bolts holding it to the core support and then two strap type deals that are designed for transmission coolers that are holding it to another bracket. All four of them. The, the two bolts are tight still, but it, it, I still don't understand physically how it happened. They were tight, but the two straps were broken. I don't know. Anyhow, it happened. It's fixed. I got it taken care of. It didn't damage anything. It just barely rubbed on one of the, the brackets on the side of the, the cooler. No harm, no foul. It was... I guess he got it from, I don't know, if he had high school or college. And so it's his car. So when we met and uh, when we went out on dates in the car, well, first off, he would, uh, we would go the wrong way down the road. Oh, yeah? Um, which made me a little nervous. <laughs> he didn't mean to. I don't know. Maybe he was in love. <laughs> <laughs> but then the car did not like me. Obviously okay. The car was jealous. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, there's several stories about the car, you know, little incidents that happened. And then uh, he let me out of the moon, let me go out one time. And it again. And we uh, so here, tell me the rest of this story. And we went, to, so I had it, and I went to get out of the car, and the door would not open. It was just things like that would happen. I couldn't really? get out of the car, so I had to let down the window and climb out the car. And that would have been great. And stuff like that all the time. I said, that car does not like me. Well, 
It just keeps not liking you, so huh? That's right. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, that's okay. Let me button this up. Anyway, so when Matthew was getting the, the car from his grandfather, we didn't tell him. And so he had a football game that night. And we were standing over here, and I had him facing that direction. The truck we knew was coming from that direction. And so I told him, you know, asked him questions. And so the truck was coming up behind him. <laughs> And he's he's so focused on talking about the you know, football game, and it comes right. You can see the car passing right behind him, goes forward. He's still talking. Then look, he's like, what? <laughs> you know, That's great. On him, and he kind of was. Well, he was very surprised and shocked. Yeah. So it was a cute story, and that is great. It was a great video watching. That him, is great. So. That is great. That's a good story right there. It was funny. Well, beautiful. Then I go over to see Mike, and I pull up, and he comes out him and his daughter Laura and he is all grins and he's been waiting like I said 2018 is when he bought it it's five years ago but comes out just grin ear to ear he's so happy he's just ecstatic like a little kid so I unloaded off the trailer we go around the block and we're driving and he's kind of getting the feel of it you know it's an old car and it all was worth it at this point when we pull out, and he goes around a corner, and he's cruising along, and he mats it, and that thing downshifts, hits first gear, blows the tires off, hits second, chirps second. Mike was so ecstatic at that point. Then, here recently, he uh, he sent me a text, and he was going through a drive through Most kids nowadays, classic cars aren't their thing. You know, you'll run into some sometimes, but he pulls up to a drive through and he said, the person waiting is like, man, that is a cool car. He's not a prideful guy. I'm not a prideful guy. I don't build my cars for someone else. You know, if people like them, great. If they don't, eh, whatever. He's the same way. And I tell you, but it's just kind of cool when someone pays attention and looks at your car and says, that's cool, gives you the thumbs up. And when I was out on the test drives tuning it and stuff, people were pulling up, thumbs up, you know, hollering, waving, honking. One guy pulled up beside me. He's hollering, how much do you want? He's, how much, how much? You know, trying to buy it. And, you know, of course, it's not mine. Um, it doesn't run. Yeah. Yep. Hang on. Let me grab something. So other than driving around the show, you've never driven it. That's right. I, I've put 400 miles on it. It's your turn. It's tough for you to drive. That's right. <laughs> oh. oh, this is awesome. You ready? I'm ready. Real, big time. Oh yeah. Where's the... There's no indicator. There's no so, indicator. No, oh, okay. no. You there wasn't it. even factory hot enough. Oh really? Yep. Okay. Just remember the ramps out on that right. side. Don't run her over. Anyone behind me? That will need to be. Yeah. That's that's going to be a mic project. Yep. Must have been the fender. What's that? I said that must have been the fender. I heard. It rubs on this side it? every okay. great one, so it full lock. So. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is cool. This is cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, 414 miles already. That's right, that's wow. right. So about 600 miles, Yeah. Wow. and you'll need to change the oil. Okay. <laughs> oh, They're right about a thousand. Oh man, this is so cool. Speedometer is dead on accurate. Is it? Okay. Yep. Wow. Wow. It just barely touch it. Off it goes. It goes pretty good. It does. It goes pretty good. Awesome. And. Like I told you, you may see some adjustments or you may, after driving it, go, hey, let's let's do this or do that. But before Christmas, I had to get it to you so you could enjoy it for a little bit. Oh, so. oh you bet. Let's see, I was uh, 11 years old when this car was made. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you weren't even a dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
Oh. And it's super stable, so you don't have to worry about like tromping on it and it pitching around sideways or okay. something weird. Yeah. I mean, you, you get on it and it's going to bust the tires loose, but it doesn't get squirrely. Feels good. Yeah. It's still cushy though. It even is. even it with is. the it upgraded is. suspension and right. stuff, it's still pretty cushy. Right. Yep. Did you get the plates on it? Yeah, plates okay. are on it. Okay. You're legal. Awesome. Yep. Look, inspected, legal. That's right. Yep. The whole bit. Do these work? Uh -huh. It works. They sure do. <laughs> they sure do. Everything works. Yep. Cool. And that sounds good. It's pretty deep, and it's got a, it's got a pretty good growl when you're on it. When it's wide open, I bet it's, it it I screams bet. pretty good. I bet it may not be your wife's favorite, but that's all right. Jump on it. Oh yeah. He's got some get up and go. That was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. That's awesome. I, I yep. gotta get into this easy. Yep, right? yep. <laughs> hey, brakes aren't too bad anymore. No, no, we got no. that all sorted yeah, out. <laughs> and it idles exactly. Yep. 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 Now, cammed vehicle life. Every once in a while, you'll come to a stop and you're sitting there and you crank the wheel uh -huh. and it'll. Oh, really? It's died on me once. Oh, really? I played with the idle and everything, and I mean, it's just it'll learn over time as well. Okay, I see. Yep. So it'll make changes as you drive. It, it will. Yeah, exactly. It will learn. The, the fuel trims where it's adjusting fuel mm -hmm. are between three and five percent which you drive a stop vehicle and they're between that the, the max they'll do is maybe eight percent okay so I mean where the tune is right there where it needs to be I see oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> we got a little squeal on it. Yeah, yeah, yep, little chirp on the back. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're going slow enough and you trump it, uh -huh. it'll just blow the tires off and then shift in a second and bark them. That it's cool. it's pretty fun. It's cool. pretty fun. Yep. I like those auto meters. They pages. turned out really good, yeah, didn't they? They did. They did. Yep. 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 Like I said, tax accurate. Speedo's accurate. Those come off the computer. The uh, the fuel gauge, hey, it now works. Yeah. Yep. So you got a full tank. Right. Temp gauge, it runs about 200 degrees all the time, even in the summer with the AC on it. Sat right. there. That's good. So oil pressure comes straight from the from the engine sender, okay. and the the temperature comes straight from the engine. So those don't go through the the computer or anything. Okay. It almost sounds like a four barrel when you get into it. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep, yep. I wish there was a car show to go to. <laughs> I know it is so late in the winter, there's yeah. nothing going on. There right. may be a Christmas one here if you keep your eye out. Oh, okay. If I see anything, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. The, um, I'll email you later with the oil filter number that you use. Okay. And really, that's the, the, the fuel filter, I'll, uh, I'll show you at some point in time where that's at. Okay. But it it's a stainless steel element. You pull it apart and clean it up. Oh really? I mean. Oh okay. You're you're good for twenty thirty thousand miles. Though. Oh really? So, yep. Where's the lights? Right here. There it is. There you go. Yep. There's Both the light. There we go. And, and the dial adjusts the, the okay. brightness and all the way up as your dome light. Like. Okay. Just it all is still that's all still factory. I, I still remember how to. Yep. 
brights are down on the floor. Got to drive a 72. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, Gabe rode with me and I hit the brights and he's like, what was that? So that's the brights and he's looking at the at the turn signal switch and I was like, no, it's down on the floor. Is, he's is like, it down here? Yeah. yeah. That's right, bro. That's, that's where, where they shoot That's me. where it belongs. That's where it belongs. Exactly. You, know, you know the joke on that one, don't you? Uh-uh. For, for Aggies, why do they put the high beam back on the floor instead of up here? You know why they did that? Uh-uh. They kept getting their foot caught in the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I guess I better be uh, better be good here. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Go right Does there. Work? Yeah, it works. Okay. You match the middle part. Okay. The, that Monte Carlo. Yeah. Strip. It passed inspection, so it works. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not on this side. No, you can get them can you? if you want, and they look just like that. And they make a manual mirror for it, so you can just set it. Yeah, well, I got some things I can tinker with. So exactly I like that. But there was there was just enough I left alone that I thought, yeah, it's still reliable, but but enough that you can play. Yes, right. Mike, what was your first car? A 69 Torino GT. That was your first car? That was my first car. Wow. That was mine. Yeah. Actually, the first car was really a, it was a Corvair, 1964 Corvair. Uh, it was my dad's. We drove that to college. Right. So, so your first two my, cars were my cool. first My first car was What did it have under the hood? 351 Windsor. Nice. Yep. I redid, re, rebuilt the engine. Uh, and, um, oh, that was the one that the time and chain jump time, yep, wasn't that's it? it? Yeah. And uh, did all the paint body work on it. So found out how much you like paint work. Showed me how much I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first job in high school. I like the I, wrenching better. Yeah. So. When I when I went to college, my first semester of college, I worked in a paint and body shop, did you? and I hated every yep. second of it. Yep. Every single second that, of that's it. That's artwork. Yeah, no, that wasn't artwork. Not, it's not filthy, me. dirty. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Like you're in a cockpit. Gotta have that. Yep. Yep. Super cool. All right, so you've had it for about six or seven weeks now. No, I think that's about right. Yeah. yeah. So what's your favorite part? All of it. <laughs> All of it. It goes. It's loud and it goes fast. There you go. Just, just the way I like it. Nice. Just the way you made it for me. That's so, right. That's right. awesome. You bet. Well, good. I love a happy yeah. customer. Oh, man. It's just... It's awesome. And friend. That's right. Friend first. Right. Yeah, I can't wait to do a little bit more to it and get it ready for the car show. Yeah. Yep, so. yep, yep. LS Fest coming up in a few months. Mm -hmm. We got a local one here that's right down the road from you. Yep. Christian Classic Cruisers. Right. So, if any of y'all are around in the area. But, yeah. So, we've got... Here's our plans. So we're going to tear off the vinyl top, mm -hmm. and then, typical, mm -hmm. you can hear the crunchy parts, oh, yeah. we'll have right. to fix that. Yep. And then, for now, instead of painting it and putting it in paint gel, mm -hmm. get some Poppy's Patina. Poppy's Patina. Mm -hmm. right. 
at least that, make it shiny. That'll yeah. make it look really nice. Yeah. So, have that have that uh, patina look to it. Yeah. Right. Well, it's kind of weird. You'll be able to see it kind of like a reflection. You'll be able to see all this, mm -hmm. but a lot of it will kind of go away. So, and it'll make that paint look real deep. Yeah, yeah that 74 Ford we did. Mm -hmm. I got done and I thought, wow, it looks like we painted it. Really? I mean, all except for the parts that it was really bad. Oh. So. I, I know how that Jimmy pickup turned out. And oh, that was yeah. Really nice. Oh, yeah. So. Yep, right. that one was nice too, for sure. Yep. So, yeah, that's the only one you've seen up close. Yeah. So, what else do, What else is your plans? What else do you want to do with it? Well, uh, we talked about the exhaust. Yeah. So we're going to extend that back because right. it dumps just after the axle. And then what we'll do is we'll just run it back, and that way uh, get it out the back. I think you were talking a little bit, too, about um, maybe uh, where the fenders are rusting. In the yeah, back yeah, there's a hole. That's right. We've got right here. You can see it. But you can put your hand right in the trunk right there. And then someone did a bunch of Bondo work long before any either of us saw it. But, yeah. I threw some rags back there to try to help keep that from coming in. Right. Help a little bit. So good, good, good. But little tweaks here and there. Very cool. I'm going to do. So. Well, I am glad that you like it. So, yep. Every time I see it, I go, wow, that car's long. Long, <laughs> low, and flat. Yep, 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 yep. That was the, that was the uh, design theme back then. Yeah. Did I ever tell you when... So, Mike was going to sell this car. He was going to just, we were going to LS swap it, bo bare bones LS swap it and sell it. And then tell us about when you changed your mind. Well, that was when um, I was at a car show in Minneapolis and uh, they had it at the fairgrounds every summer and there's just hundreds and hundreds of cars. So I'm walking around looking at all these cars and I see these Monte Carlos everywhere and I'm like, man. It, this it's really a cool car you know they're not very popular but but i'm thinking these cars are getting more rare by the day oh yeah and i'm like why am i getting rid of this thing i'm never going to find another car like this especially buying it from original owners right i'm like i got to keep it there's no way and there's no way i'm going to get rid of it so, nice i was happy when we made that decision yep me too. i was pretty excited i'm not going to find it. another one that's right so, that's right yep that that's when the build took a whole different change yep. we went air conditioning and a little more of a hot rod and you know a little more power and a little better this a little better that every time i take it out I'm trying to find someone to race it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well you know you, you work those early morning hours nobody's out racing at noon that's true <laughs> <laughs> Time. That's right. That's right. Go for a cruise on the weekend. Yeah. Well, guys, if you're going to be at LS Fest this year in Texas, May 17th, 18th, this guy will be there. And I'm pretty sure the 54, Lewis is going to be there one day. I'll have the boat there. And if all goes well, my Blazer will be there too. With a turbo sticking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> an LS Blazer and an LS boat. That's right. Thanks for talking to us. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought my setup was kind of sketchy. Well, I saw that going down the road.